like a bunny, hop up and down, hop many times and turn around. Step on a line, not so fine. Step on a space, I won't trade. Hop like a rooster, hop like a hen. Hop ten times and that's the end. Why, sure. You don't have to pick them off the ground. This man has more in his car, just over there. Cassie, look what we have. You want some? It's lunchtime and Janie still isn't home. Perhaps she went to Mary's house. No, they're not there either. But that's nothing to worry about. They've been late before. They're probably at a friend's house. Or having a Coke. Or at the library. Or at the playground. Where? Where are we going, mister? You'll see. There's nothing to be afraid of. Meanwhile, Kathy is on her way home. She's been taught that if a stranger offers her anything or suggests getting into a car, she is to go right home and report it to her parents. Yes, that's what she must do. But look at that pretty doll. That's the kind she wanted for Christmas. If she had it, she could join Jeannie and Mary when they play with their dolls. And their afternoon tea parties in the backyard. They must be there now, feeding their dolls, arguing if it's better to be a nurse or a school teacher. And she can be just as strict as they are when it comes to caring for their pets. And she could use her mother's pretty clothes to pretend she was grown up, too. And she would trust them with her deepest secrets and laugh with them because the world is so friendly and full of fun. And all you have to do is what Mom and Daddy ask. Gosh, I gotta tell Mommy about that man. I wanna go home. I'll take you home pretty soon. I wanna go now. This will only take a minute. Come on out. Please, mister. You do what I say, and then I'll take you home. 
Keep quiet, I'll kill both of Parents finally called the police. Doesn't seem possible that anything could happen to their daughters. They're such good girls. But the presence of the police, their quiet seriousness, brings home to the parents the reality of what they might be confronted with. Will you describe your daughter? Well, she's just nine. She has dark brown eyes. And she's wearing a blue and white play suit. She's never been this late before. And your daughter? Jeannie's only eight. Dark hair and eyes. Pretty. And wearing a pink sunsuit. Jean, who saw them last? No one I've talked to. I've talked with all her friends. They just remember seeing the girls in the playground. Nothing else. Isn't there something we can do? We'll find them. Information obtained by the police is swiftly checked out and cars alerted. Several hours after the two girls left their homes, the two witnesses helped put the pieces together. One of the witnesses was the woman who went by the playground. She lives across the street from Mary. She saw them get into the car with a man. He seemed to know the girl so well. He might have been an uncle or a close friend. Oh, she thought about asking where he was taking the girls, but who wants to be called a busybody? Hello. Oh, Margaret, how are you? You say Dorothy's girls? Are you sure? And her friend is missing too? I just can't believe it. And you say no one saw them go away? Oh, no. No. I don't believe they went to some party. Goodbye. Maybe there's still a chance. Why didn't she do something immediately? Suppose they had called her a busybody or a crank. So what? The other witness was Kathy. Being a young girl absorbed in so many things, it wasn't until late in the afternoon that Kathy finally remembered to tell her mother about the stranger.
Then Kathy repeated the story to the police and Jeannie's and Mary's parents. Like any parent, Mary's mother thought, But why my child? Why? Why? Why not any other one? Why? There are reasons why. But my girl knows about sex. I always answer her questions honestly. When she was only six, I told her where babies came from. The idea of the seed and the egg, and the mother's part and the father's, about love and marriage. I keep no secrets from her. Of course, I never told her about the sick or, or the perverted. Why frighten a child with such stories? That some people find pleasure in molesting young girls? It might warp her understanding about sex. I only did what every parent tries to do. But why my child? Why? And not... And not Kathy? The answer is her parents. Like you, they know about molesters. But unlike you, they realized it was necessary to give Kathy specific information about child molesters, people with perverted minds who enjoy touching young children. Kathy's parents know that most child molesting cases can be prevented, not all of course, but most would never happen if the child victims had sometime been given the opportunity to know their enemy. Like, what does a child molester look like? Do they have sinister faces? Or do they look like people you see every day? Police records show child molesters range from the very rich to the very poor. They can be old or young. Where are they found? In slums, like here? Or in houses, just like your own? Actually, they can be anybody and live any place. The thing that matters is that they do exist. And a child must know what to do if approached. Four warning children can prevent most molesting crimes. But won't warnings about sex criminals set up an undesirable mental association in the child's mind? Only if warnings are part of the child's general sex education. Education about molesters is a specific subject to be handled separately. For the best molester prevention program, start with preschool children. And for a non-alarming effect, you should combine rules about strangers with safety rules and rules of good conduct, such as look both ways before crossing the street. Don't get into automobiles or take walks with strangers. Say no thank you and be firm. Always do your homework, and if invited into a car, after refusing, write down the license number. A stick or a stone will do. Talk in low whispers in the movies. And if a stranger talks to you or touches you, call the usher. Make your allowance last the entire week. And don't accept money, candy, or toys from strangers. If lost, go to the nearest policeman for help.
If a stranger asks directions, tell him to see a policeman or inquire at the nearest store. Never go with him or near his car. Never be late for school. And never go with a stranger, even if he says your mother or father sent him to get you. Parents should tell their children they'll never send a stranger for them. And teachers should never release a child to a stranger without first checking with the parents. I'm sorry, I don't know who you are, but even with a written note, I can't permit him to go with you or anyone else unless I first check with his parents personally. Instruct your children not to play with stray dogs or cats and never play in alleys, public toilets, or empty buildings. Although in some areas parents permit others to teach their children the facts of life, molester education is your responsibility. Authorities contend that it is negligent for today's parents not to educate their children about child molesters. A few minutes of instruction could save you a lifetime of grief. The missing girls were found. These are the actual police films of the tragedy. Your children put their trust in you. Do not betray them. Teach them all the safety rules. Give them their chance at life. <laughs>